Grace, peace, and welcome to Walk This Way Ministries podcast, where the folks are living life a better way via discipline, discipleship, and duplication. The facilitator for this platform, who is the husband of First Lady Mildred Monroe, is baptized, called, licensed, and ordained in the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ. He brings forth a wealth of applicable spiritual wisdom from the Holy Spirit and pastoral experiences derived from a quarter century of dedicated services with various denomination ministries. So during this time we're spending together, set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Please welcome Pastor Stephen Monroe. Wonderful God in heaven, thank you so much for an opportunity, this particular message as we go forth. And uh, bless the hearers as well, dear Father God, and prick their hearts and change their minds and so they may want to go forth. Be a, a blessing to you as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we're going to be coming from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. And I'm just going to do the first three verses. And it reads like this in the New King James Version. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. So we're going to run with the uh, title or the theme today, titled Get Out. In the context of direction, life-altering choices must be made and applied. So we're going to go ahead and set this up and kind of give you a little background. Abram himself, as we're using the, the name Abram before it gets changed to Abraham, but Abram whose father is Terah, and Terah happens to be an idol maker. So if you know anything or did a a little background check as far as where Abram and his father and his household is from. They're from the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. And these particular folks are extremely wicked. They are uh, extremely uh, vile. And during these days and times, and this is coming from after the great flood with Terah, that's four generations after the flood. And Abram, of course, is the fifth generation. During these generations, again, evil has risen his ugly head. The thing about that is this is almost like the days and times we live in today where a lot of idols have been erected, a lot of wrong waywardness, uh, a lot of crime, a lot of evil, uh, a lot of depictions from our imaginations, that's mankind's imaginations, pretty much acting like there is no God. Everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. So this is where Abram is being called out of that particular country. With that being said, do not be conformed to this world or its culture or its system and it is very deceitful the adversary has not changed his tricks or have not changed his mo modus operandi how he would like to kick man off the lord's agenda and get them going in a wrong direction he doesn't necessarily want you to believe in him he just don't want you to believe in god so that's the adversary's thing and he has not changed his mode of operations at all so he continued to do the same thing and just said we succumb to that thing simply because of the uh, sinful nature or the flesh that we are dwelling in right now. And now our flesh is inclined to uh, kind of dwell in that arena. So when we're talking about get out of your country, uh, that simply means that particular area. So as we know, Abram was directed to leave that area, leave that surrounding, get out of that environment which is always enticing, which is always calling you, which is always wants to uh, just cater to whatever you want according to the flesh. And we understand the flesh in and of itself will never be satisfied. It's called uh, insatiable. So just get away from that environment, get away from that area. And also he says, get out of or get away from your particular family. We describe how Tara's family is, as we understand it, he is the leader of that family. He's an idol maker, so they are worshiping and giving unto other gods. Just so we know in this particular time, to kind of connect it at this point, you understand in this nation, we have freedom of religion. So you can pretty much make up what you want to follow. You can pretty much make up a religion and follow that. We understand that there are cults and there are cult leaders and there are cult-like activities. Uh, with that being said, you want to get out of his household. Not only that, out of his father's house. So that pretty much means just leave the actual house itself and establish your own house. We understand in those days and times that, you know, clans and nomads, they all dwell in the same house until they're well into their 70s. Pretty much their children and their children's children all grew up under the same tent and they all move and they live together. And not only that being said, but they all grow up from birth 
learning the exact same things because that's their environment. So generation after generation, it perpetrates the same type of lifestyle and the same type of mindset. And it goes forward next to the next generation and to the next generation. So God particularly have somehow seen favor in his being as well. This particular part of the story as it pertains to Abram, he had challenged his father's idols and his gods, you know, where he pretty much tore them down. That action alone depicts Abram is not really on board with the same ideology and philosophy as his father's household. So the Lord has seen this and called him out and decide to use him in that particular fashion. So to begin this process, choices are made. The choice to change your mind is paramount. To understand this, and we can see that how the Bible depicts things, we understand that. Do you know that a new direction is really a faith growth process? So every step that you take is going to be a step of faith in pretty much in every direction that you go in, even all the way to the beginning of the thought. So as the Bible depicts about Abraham's story, famine hit the land. And when famine hit the land, the Bible specifically says in what direction he went. He says he went down to Egypt. And of course, during those circumstances that arose from being down in Egypt, then he came up from Egypt. Even the same thing with Jonah. We're familiar with his story, since he's the one who got swallowed by the great fish. His story simply means, as God called him to go up to Nineveh to go ahead and preach a word, but he decided to go down to the docks and catch a ship to Tarshish. And he went down in the lowest part of that particular ship. And uh, next thing you know, he was thrown off and went down into the sea. But God called him a second time. So he had to get up and get on his game and get on up to Nineveh to do the Lord's will. So same thing with us as well, too. When he finally calls us, you know, oftentimes, you know, we've seen this in churches where the youth, they accept Christ and they decide to be on fire for the Lord. But next thing you know, something happens where they're upset or something went wrong or they see something erroneous in the church. This has happened to me as well, too, where I've, I was shown a couple of things where it just don't look like it's a godly thing. And this is actually inside the house of God. But nevertheless, I understood that I had a personal relationship with God and it was a spirit which was leading me, the Holy Spirit, which is leading me to continue to delve into his word and study in his word and making sure I'm interfacing with his word. And that's where the power really comes in doing that Bible intake and being disciplined in that. As we transition to our next point, or our first point actually, and that first point is simply get up. So once you get the call to say get out from this particular environment, in this particular household, this particular ideology, you're going to have to make a move. And that move is in faith. So the first point we talked about is get up. So when you are going in the wrong direction, when you're going in sin, which you will have to recognize, once you recognize you're going in the wrong way, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to get up and be on the move. God will show you where that is. Once you already established an attitude, you're going to physically get up and then head in that right direction. With Joshua chapter 7 and verse number 10, we understand that not only the get up portion is really a, for you to move out, but sometimes some things are going to have to be moved out of your life. Some people are going to have to be moved out of your life. So when we talk about in Joshua chapter 7, the sin of Achan, who actually stole and was enticed by the riches, and he hid them in his tent. Well, judgment came to them, and him and his household had to be removed from that particular nation or that clan, because it held up the body of the Israelites as they was traveling. So some people in your life and some things in your life or even some jobs in your life are going to have to be removed from you to get you to go in the Lord's direction or to continue that progression forward, progressing forward and to be successful. Even in Luke chapter 15, we understand about the prodigal son, but even he had come from his backslidden state. He actually had to come to himself when he remembered where he was from and head back to his father's house. We understand also too that we want to recognize and come out from what we call the debauchery of Babylon. Babylon is where we live now in, in this particular days and time in the world and its system of darkness. And it's easy to get entrapped in that particular area because since it caters to the flesh. And that's one heck of a battle when uh, you are blessed with the Holy Spirit and you want to go and do the right thing. But the flesh is always battling with the spirit. And that's one heck of a fight that's going on inside your being. The adversary is constantly bombarding you with the things of the world, the riches of the world. No matter what venue you look at. You're always going to be seeing something, whether it's on the television, whether it's uh, 
on your in your neighborhood or even in your own household as well that just doesn't jive well even with your ears you're going to hear a lot of things which is not right things are going to be taken out of context as things are being presented to you and the things that you hear and you don't really get the understanding of it but yet you're still confused but listening to the Lord and tuning into him and leaning into his voice, you always do the right thing and hear the right thing. So it's easy to make a decision and get up and go. We understand also, too, when Jesus was going about and he was saying, follow me. Well, immediately they got up and followed him. They left their nets right there with their father or even with Matthew, Levi's name at the time. He got up and left the cash on the table, left the money as he was one of those guys who was a tax collector. But they immediately followed him. However, it just it wasn't haphazard or uninformed, got up and follow me. They had heard and they had seen the things that Jesus has done for them to make an immediate move to get up and get out of that particular environment. Even with Nicodemus, he came to see Jesus at night. Apparently, he had to get up and get over there where he was. But this is based on things that he has seen and he has heard where he knew that he was from the Lord. Nevertheless, he knew in, in him as a high ranking official, in the Israelite camp as a Pharisee you would think he would know these things but nevertheless it doesn't matter what your status is what your title is or where you, or how long you've been in church so as we uh, once we recognize and agree that we are deep in sin and way out of bounds your choice to stay in it or to get up out of it that really remains on you the Bible recommends you get up and get out of it and get ready to press forward and that pressing forward really is going to require some humbleness and some humility. And what that simply means is you just have to be willing to go. You don't want to have the uh, attitude to go out of obligation or you don't want to go just to be out of trouble. You don't want to go just to dodge ball hell. That's not the idea. The idea is you want to be willing to get onto the agenda. You're willing to, to be involved. You're willing to be sold out for the gospel of Jesus Christ and have a great concern for others and not so much as yourself. But certainly you can see, and even in your mind's eye, you see faces of people who are not saved. You see people who are, are actually uh, living in their lifestyle, which is really contrary to what the Lord really wants. This is where you want to get up and you're getting prepared. That really leads us to our next point, getting prepared. So we want to get ready is our next point. And you want to give yourself wholly to the Lord and he'll provide everything that you need. Getting ready is not you getting yourself ready, but God getting you ready. The template is as follows. When you was born or when, when God approached Adam or created him in the garden, mankind was formed and God breathed into him the essence of God. He was given him provisions, given him personhood and given him a purpose. Uh, he gave him a place to stay in the garden on the east side. Not only that, but he gave him a, a task to take care of the garden as well. Not only that, he gave him a personhood simply means he was made and created in the image of God. So there he has everything that he needs. And even today, for us, everyone has been given a measure of faith. It's just a matter of activating it. We understood and we can reflect back, going all the way back to Abraham in the environment that he was in. And really, it was really thick back then as far as the way the world was back then in that particular time. Even before the flood, but yet evil still came forward. But even today, evil is running rampant. You can turn on the news and you can hear everything and that justice is not being done. You was involved in that, contributing to that debauchery as well, and that evenness as well. But you have to recognize where you are. And we, even though we call for justice for those particular people doing wrong, that's really up to God to render that justice. We want to be in, with the mindset and looking at it through the eyes of Jesus. And we want, just like we wanted mercy, we want mercy for them as well too. Certainly we want them rehabbed and going the right way that God wants them to go in. Certainly, but that's God's business and he's going to handle that. But our heart really goes out to not only the victims, but also those who are creating victims as well. So once that is done, how we continue to get ready for that. For God actually tells us or commands us to be spiritually disciplined in 2 Timothy 2.15. And that's for the purpose of godliness. So when you are studying and getting to these disciplines and prayer, Bible intake and fasting and journaling and you know, there's a myriad of disciplines that you want to get into for the purpose of godliness, but that's just not for you, for yourself. When God decides to use you and when you come to a particular level to use you, he can use you to interface with other folks who are out there into society. So when you're out there in society, people can look at you and then when you open your mouth, they can hear that there's something different about you. They can hear in your words and 
look at your countenance and see that there is something strange about you and they're, they're enticed where they want to come closer and take a look at you and hear more of what you have to say. They are what we call intrigued by what's in you and not you yourself. They see where you are, no matter what occupation you may have, no matter what status you may have, but that's all the Lord's doing where he has you, where he wants you. And that's for the purposes of drawing people to Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5, 5, it says, be holy as you are, as he is holy. So by way of the Holy Spirit, he gives you assurance of salvation, past, present, and the future is given. In a military context, we see is very disciplined. For those who may have went into the military, as certainly myself with that experience, when you get there to basic training, they pretty much strip you down and pretty much give you clothes and give you a purpose and gives you an agenda. They feed you and they house you and not only that, but they train you. They give you everything that you need. Now, that's not to say they won't put money in your pocket because that's naturally that comes also. But nevertheless, everything is provided for you. Blessings multiplied to you and yours from Walk This Way Ministries, and thank you for listening. If by chance you've been edified by our podcast, feel free to like, comment, and share with whosoever the Lord lays on your heart. And by all means, subscribe to be notified when new content is posted. Now that you're being assured by Philippians 1.6, and Philippians 1.6, just so you know, it says, for him who has begun a good work in you, he is going to complete it until the day Jesus comes back. Really, you're just allowing it to happen, being willing to allow that to happen to you as he continues to prepare you. We often ask ourselves sometimes, well, I'm just not a patient person. You know, where you have the patience, you just have to use it. And God is going to draw that out of you because that really that prepares you to be prepared for everything that's thrown your way. Some things you're just going to have to wait for. Some things you're going to have to sit in until uh, God comes to get you out of that because you're there for a reason. And just to kind of give you a little background, we understand that David was anointed king as a young man, as a boy that was taken from the sheepfold. But it wasn't until 40 years later before he began being the actual king. Matter of fact, he had to be on the run. He went into a backslidden state and the king was trying to kill him. All of those things was to prepare him to sit on the throne and be the person that God wants him to be. To be an example so that we can see him being a type of Christ. So certainly you had to go through the valleys and you had to go through some high waters. You had to go through the floods and fires of life until God gets you to where he wants you to be. Until that particular time, until he's finished or you completed your particular task or his will for your life. So now as we can see that happening, as we are making application of our said disciplines by walking by faith. Remember, all of this is by faith because God has taken us somewhere. We can kind of look back. I don't know if you're familiar with your history or not, but even on D-Day, storming the beaches of Normandy, those people from a military perspective had to be prepared before they got there. And they were prepared and some people lost their lives at that particular time. But for the overall purpose, it actually changed the course of World War II just because they went in to the battle prepared. In these particular states, the 54th Regiment of Massachusetts, they stormed Fort Wagner. You probably can see a good depiction of that in the movie Glory with Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman. But yet, nevertheless, even though they may have lost their life, it sets the stage or a turning point for history. What we're going for is that is talking about get moving. That's where we want to get to our third point. Once we get up and decide to go, and next thing you know, we're going to be getting ourselves ready because we know that this is spiritual warfare and it is extremely graphic. But yet, once we are getting prepared, and that never ends, we get moving. So every step you take, commanded by the Lord, is really a leap of faith. The Lord has already stationed you where he wants you to be and will relocate you as he will. Preparation by way of the discipline of prayer will result in action. Remember, that's just not a one-way conversation. We're just not giving him a, a laundry list of things that we want or want to do. But we're going to have to wait for that particular response. And when we get that response, it's time to get moving. As we see in Exodus 14 and verse 15, God was simply pretty much telling Moses, what's that in your hand? Time for praying is over. It's time to get moving. So time to move under God's protection. So with that being said, he had to go through the waters, of course, and he had to leave Israel. 2.5 million people had to walk through that particular sea. With that baptism that you receive, you are now putting a mark on your back saying, now I've been initiated into the body and it's a public thing and I identify with the agenda of God.
Joshua himself, when they got prepared, they had to march around Jericho, which is, and, and, and you got to understand that Joshua is a general. He does know military tactics. He'd been trained by Moses, who was very familiar with the terrain and the land and the geography. But once he is already prepared to do battle as a military-minded general, God comes back with an unorthodox battle plan as we are marching around Jericho. But nevertheless, that's still every little step around that is still an act of faith as well. But he is moving according to the Lord's direction. Matthew 28, 19 commands us, as we're given that particular edict to say, hey, go ye therefore and make disciples, making disciples. That is the imperative. That is a moving effort. You're going to be sent to the highways and the byways and to the hedges to weed out where those people are hiding in the darkness and or have been engulfed in darkness or have been captured in darkness. But nevertheless, that's what we're charged to do. And the Lord is going to make a way for that. Not only that, it's going to make a way for you to exercise your gifts. And your gifts are specifically designed to bring people to Christ, but also to edify the body of Christ and also glorifying God. So this is how we walk. This is how we go through life. But it all begins by getting out. So the template is in place, as we can see in Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, we see this particular template as the blind man Bartimaeus, as he recognized who God is and he calls on him, says, Son of David, have mercy on me. And the world is trying to stifle him and get him to be quiet because the world look at him as nobody. And he wants you to look at yourself as nobody since you're blind and you're debilitated and you're handicapped. Keep pressing forward because you've heard Okay, and that's how faith comes. It comes by hearing. And then once God has called him or Jesus called him forward, he asks you or he writes you a blank check. And he says, what do you want? What can I do for you? And he says he wants to see. And asking that you want to receive your sight simply means you want to understand. You want to be prepared. So that's what that wants. And then once you're prepared, then you get moving. Because in that Mark chapter 10 arena right there where we see blind man Bartimaeus, he begins to follow Jesus on the road. And he recognized he's going to be following Jesus on the road because he's, Jesus tells him, now your faith has healed you, go your way. And then the text says he followed Jesus on the way because now he's on one accord with Christ because he follows him along the way. So all that is a way of saying, hey, I'm going to get out of this world system. I'm going to be getting out, out from under the influence of this world's culture. I'm going to be getting out from the influence of of the drugs and alcohol abuse and immoral relationships. You want to get out of all of those things so that you can be prepared by the Lord. And all that begins by changing your mindset, changing your mind to accept Christ as your personal savior. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, teach you and lead you. And also to listen out for the Lord's voice when he sends you where he wants you to go. And all these things we pray. Amen. It is our frequent, fervent prayer here at Walk This Way Ministries that you are impacted by every Christocentric message that you hear here. If as a result of listening to this message you have accepted Christ or returned to fellowship, praise the Lord. If you are walking well, we encourage you to continue. If you believe in discipleship and membership is what you seek, give us the opportunity to feed you until you can feed yourself and subsequently feed others. By all means, leave a detailed message at 888-202-4409. We praise the Lord in advance for your decision to walk this way and live life a better way. That number again is 888-202-4409.